What a mark. A few things happen in the world of wrestling besides um, the Velveteen Dream finally getting fired. Yeah. Um, did you guys know that people were, this is from Sean Rossett, people were scared that he was being set up to help coach classes? No. Yeah, he, he'd been still doing like open rings and still actively training, and they thought he was going to be set up to be a coach, and people were concerned about that. It's a lot of wacky shit happening down at NXT. Yeah, man. Like Drake, fucking younger, is a racist. <laughs> that, that, I think that's like one of the saddest things to hear. Like you, you hear that it, originally it sounds kind of like, oh, this guy's just no one wants to hear his politics, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's like, oh, okay, all right, why wasn't he fired sooner? I mean, since more so for all the people that were like, I this isn't the Drake that I know. And so, like, you think, oh, well, you know, I mean, he's going kind of really hard right with his uh, politics, Western hard right, I guess. But <laughs> now, yeah, it's nowadays, like, what, man, what happened to that guy? Learning yeah. that he might be racist or probably is racist, definitely racist. Yeah, is, yeah, he's yeah. not going hard right. He's going hard Reich. Yeah, hey. exactly, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, God just. He's a fucking idiot, man. There's no, yeah. there's no other way to say it now at this no. point. Well, I heard like rumors backstage. He almost got beat up. Yeah. yeah. On his way out, him and Triple H got into like a shouting match, possibly, and it didn't so, go well. That's why it was so surprising to me to see him refing a match on NXT this past Tuesday. Yeah. Man. Yeah. What was like it? John said, why wasn't this dude let go a while ago? He's it's definitely especially... mentally not all there. I agree, I, I, because it is a big red flag to me. Because you read the reports of uh, minority wrestlers being scared to even be in the closed yeah. room with him. Wow! Yeah, they were terrified to be in a room with him. And then you know, after in your house, I think Triple H did the speech to talk about how NXT was a place of inclusion, and then he talked about race, sexuality, and he started talking about religion. And I guess Drake like aggressively started collecting his belongings and like stormed out of the, the meeting when he was talking about, you know, religion. Like he's one of those guys that's like, you can only be a Christian, like that yeah, sort of dude. thing. And somewhere along the line, this guy lost his fucking marbles. Like there, there's no other way to describe it. Like you could do it under the guise of patriotism. You can do it under the guise of whatever fucking words you want to use. But the dude is the dude is not in his right mind anymore. And it's no. sad to see because when he first got signed to NXT, I couldn't think of a single bad thing anyone had to say about him. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. That's like that, the only that knock is. on him that I heard was just, just that he was a deathmatch wrestler. That was it. Because mm -hmm. people there's a lot of people that just don't like deathmatch wrestling no matter what. But he He's a really good ref. Yeah. Yeah, he was a good ref. I thought he was a decent, like actual wrestler too back in the day. But mm -hmm. all that shit's out the window now. No. Put, yeah, put him yeah, in the I same see. fucking book with Terry, man. Yep. Yeah. Put him in the same book yeah. with Terry. Oh, yeah. Not not quite quite in the the Chris Benny like people don't even like to say your name publicly. Yeah. But he he's... like I, I I don't see this ending well with him. He seems yeah. that far gone. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah, Alex absolutely. Jones doing? To accept the truth and buck the system and the group collective. Do that. And you'll earn your way to the next level. This is the info war. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's the uh, Ben Shapiro? Like, someone tweeted, they're like, "You're gonna see Drake with uh, Gina Carano in a Ben Shapiro film." <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh god, man, it breaks my heart to find out that Gina Carano. I know, man. That is, yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. That that yeah, yep. Man, who's that? She was the uh, a real. I guess you could say pioneer, even though women's MMA has some pioneers that were kind of oh, around yeah. before, like, you know, yeah. Shayna Baszler and Marlis Kunin, that sort of thing. But she was the first real woman to start to break through, and they tried to push her, I think, as a strike force featherweight champion. They were going to try to push her in that role, but then she got murdered by Cyborg. Yeah, they Cyborg, wanted her to beat yeah. Cyborg so she yeah. could beat up, beat up the ugly, manly Brazilian girl and look how this pretty... American girl is such a great fighter and blah blah blah. That fight's a banger though. That's a really good fight. It is, yeah. But man. um, 
there's a really weird moment too where Gina Carano has the mount and she just backs off from the mount. Like yeah. she doesn't want to do anything with the ground. But in any regard, she was like Ronda Rousey before Ronda Rousey. And yeah, right. She has tweeted some very questionable things like um, comparing people on the right, like the, the persecution of people on the right or the criticisms of people on the right is akin to like the Jews during the Holocaust. Yeah. Shit like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it went from kind of like almost bullying tweets or uh, just kind of under the breath comment tweets about like someone's like, hey, you know, why don't you put your pronouns in your profile? You know, she just have some backhanded comment on it. And then it, it was just everything started coming out full force. Yeah, yeah. It, it's one of those things where it's like the best heels are the heels that think they're always right. Yeah. But then, <laughs> yeah, the yes. the the that isn't really getting them heat. They're starting to get like X Pac go away heat. Yeah, kind right. How I feel yeah. about like, people like her and and Drake. It's just like I don't. Whatever. I I'm trying to make it a point now to just stop talking about this. Well, fucking goof on this show yeah, after but... this. <laughs> I kind of want to get to get back to the Velveteen dream thing. Do you guys think he is, uh, it'll go down as one of the biggest wastes of potential talent or talent? I mean, I, I hate to say ever, but I mean, this dude was getting praised by the likes of people like John Cena and stuff. Um, you look at Velveteen dream. He had the look, he had the charisma. He could, he could work. And now that's pretty much, probably it for the guy for a for a company that was in such dire need of that next big superstar that we haven't really seen since john cena i guess you can maybe say roman reigns but i think velveteen dream could have possibly been that guy am i out of my mind for thinking that or no so i said in a group chat with some some other friends earlier that finding out Velveteen Dream is a scumbag kind of hurt for me because I felt like he was someone, just in terms of a performer and a character, I felt like he was going to keep getting better. I felt like his character is something that he could do face or heel for a really long time. There's a lot of different directions you could take it in. I felt like you know he was getting better as a wrestler. I think the dude's only what, like twenty three or twenty four or something like that. Yeah, he's still yeah, really young. Yeah, so young I, I can only imagine how much better he'd be in another five years, ten years, that sort of thing. Uh, as far as being like a guy who, I mean, I know he had some indie experience because he teamed with Leo Rush and things like that. So I, I was gonna say you could definitely say too that he would be one of the few men that were a performance center product that really turned out to be successful because there hasn't really been too many guys that came from the performance center that have been a real true success, like started the performance center, became a big time player. It really only seems to be the women, but even then like all the four horse women, the only one that ever really came through uh, developmental, like actually started in developmental with Charlotte, all the other ho uh, horse women had already been wrestling for a few years before they went to NXT or FCW, really. So yeah. I wouldn't even count them. A lot of people consider the Performance Center to be a bit of a failure when it comes to churning out talent. And he seemed like the guy that was going to kind of buck that trend. And then on top of that, for me, you don't really see a lot of young black guys getting their just due in the world of pro wrestling. And it seemed like he was on route to kind of correct that as well. It was mm -hmm. great to see a young black dude doing his thing and getting over and being on his way to superstardom and hopefully winning a world title. So it, it hurt me on that level to just see, you know, unfortunately another, uh, another young black man just kind of just fall from grace. And I was hoping, like, I was hoping, it, you know, somewhat that those rumors weren't true that, you know, it, it was a misunderstanding, like something would come out to clear things up because it's one of those things that 
you know, you've seen this happen so many times with athletes and things like that. You're like, damn, I hope that's not true. And then it's just yeah, so yeah. much damning evidence against them. You're like, fuck, this guy's a scumbag. This sucks. Yeah. And you feel bad saying, because you, yeah, yeah. you cheer for a scumbag. You know, you you play as him in the video games. You buy merch. You watch his matches back. You praise him publicly. That sort of thing sucks. Like like how much I praised Tessa Blanchard on this show. That sucked when I found out that she yeah, was right? shit. Like it was not yeah. a good feeling. So yeah, I definitely think he would go down as a big what if. And it, you know, it's a shame to to see him kind of fall from grace. And I'm kind of confused too about um like legally what's happening with him. Like I, I feel like if nothing, if he, it was proven that he didn't do anything wrong, why hasn't there been any sort of statement to come out and just prove that? But exactly. I, I don't know. I guess I'm still kind of confused as to what's actually happening with him. So I haven't heard much about, you know, the happenings of it as of late. He seemed to be pretty quiet about the whole situation, which didn't look good, I guess. Um, he really didn't come out and, like, defend himself too much that I yeah, know right. of. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, I was a – a huge mark for the guy. I thought he was great. I know the the story you guys know, I had recently just bought a Velveteen Dream t-shirt and uh, got it. And literally like the next day or day, a couple of days after I got the shirt, these allegations came out <laughs> and I had the shirt hanging up in my closet for a long time. Cause I, like I said, I didn't really know, what the hell was going on? Was this true? Was it not true? This, that. Um, I ultimately threw the shirt out. But again, it's just like what Damon just said. Are, are, is, where, are the, where, do the, where do these allegations stand right now where they'll be like legal course? Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. It's been uh, kind of kept quiet that the whole time, like the stuff came out and then it just went silent. And, you know, finding out that even beforehand, there might have been some stuff that kind of came out about it and no one paid attention because they just thought like, oh, hey, it's just another... I hate to say it, but like, oh, it's another crazy fan just trying to make allegations. And, you know, he's really hot right now. It's, so. we, uh, it's still saying it's recording. Either. Either. So, yeah. yeah, that was weird. Sorry about that. No, yeah. I think I was yeah, on this man. goddamn um, PWI Insider. This is a fucking website. I was trying to see what was going on with the uh, Velveteen Dream as far as his legal, uh, his case is concerned, or if there is a case. And they're screaming at me that I'm using an ad blocker. It's like, no, <sighs> I'm not disabling my fucking ad blocker. I hate that yeah, these right. sites now caught on that people are doing that. Yeah. And I get it. You need your ad revenue. And I know that a lot of journalists want to get paid for their work. So that's why a lot of the stories are behind paywalls and things like that. But it's like, it's, don't fucking scream at me that, hey, it looks like you're using an ad blocker, you piece of shit. <laughs> Or I'm trying to read, like, I'll be trying to read something that should be information that I should be able to to look at. Like, I wanted to know something about, like, COVID statistics. So I'll go to, like, the, the New York Times or USA Today, and it's like, oh, hey, you oh, want to read gotta this? Pay. Yeah, you got to pay. It's, like, it's about a fucking global pandemic, you idiots. I'm not paying yeah, for that. Right. I just wanted to look at the stat because I Googled it and you were the first one there. Like, Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to disparage any journalists that are out there putting their stories behind paywalls or anything like that, like Sean Ross Sapp, like, uh, Fightful, anything like that. I understand why you guys do it. Where yeah. were we? Where were we? Velveteen Dream? Yeah, yeah, just uh, allegations and whatnot against them and, and basically everyone feeling like an asshole uh, for kind of blowing off the first kid. Uh, that that had like the allegations and they're thinking oh no this guy's just a crazy fan or whatever and then uh <laughs> a wrong choice of words i'm really sorry <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i couldn't hold it back uh, <laughs> it's gone <laughs> oh my god oh uh, 
<laughs> the views and opinions are those of. of We're not going to kick him off the show. Time. We're going to fucking beat him off the show. <laughs> fucking Dana White. He's beating him off. <laughs> <laughs> Jerk and <an> angel. <laughs> Oh god, we're going to hell for laughing at that. All right. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do we go from here? <laughs> is there is there any way you see Velveteen Dream ever ever getting back into the wrestling business? May uh yes, but not it, not being at the same stardom. Uh I I think he's young enough that if uh, these situations, if he truly basically goes into rehabilitation and stuff like that, uh, there's a possibility of him getting back into it. I don't know why, and these things are not comparative at all, but for whatever reason, I also kind of see it being like a Zach Gowan case. Uh, and Zach admits that he got released because he was cocky and, and he basically just had heat with everyone backstage. And, you know, he was just a young 20 something and uh, people just hated him. And he was like, rightfully so. I was a total dick. I was a total asshole. And he had alcohol and drug problems. And he went through the WWE rehab with that. And, you know, he's, he's just a better person nowadays. He's a lot older, but in the same vein, He's not back in WWE and you know, that's not knocking anything against him. There could be a possibility where he goes back, but even if he did go back, I don't see him still having that same level of uh, just popularity. And I kind of feel the same way with Velveteen dream, even if, you know, 10 years from now, he, he goes in rehabilitation. He goes into these programs himself tries to make himself a better person, realizing his mistakes and whatnot, uh, that's still going to haunt him. And that's still going to be something that uh, I think people don't want to want to touch, don't want to bring up. Um, that's yeah, that's, 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 that's with that, that stuff. That stench is always going to be on him. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a really, that's, that's a really big one. That's a really yeah. big one. I mean, that, that ruins people. Even, you know, you hear the cases of the, public indecency basically like taking a piss in public and then all of a sudden you yeah know, it's yeah. like oh you're screwed on that uh you know and that that that's always going to be there and uh, that's one of those things no matter what that even if you do get the help that's needed for that sort of situation you know there's still i i mean how many other lists are out there for any other crimes or any other situations that happen um, you know, there's a sex offenders list. And even if you do your time, you're still on that list for the rest of your life. You know, you can do your time after killing someone and there's not like a, uh, oh, hey, this guy's a homicide list. I mean, th these things get out, obviously, you know, people know, but um, sex offender registry is right there. Like you can, you can look through that stuff. You can find out, you can see all the the people in, in your neighborhood. And, you know, that that's a stigma that still goes with you. Uh, then that's really going to be hard for him to to uh, get rid of, um, you know, even with him. And, and I, I'm making no excuses for him at all. No. But but being at that young of an age to himself, he really screwed himself over with this stuff uh, and not not realizing that he had a problem and trying to get get that taken <laughs> care of. Um, now, I don't know the youngest person that he was in contact with. Um I think 14 or 15 was the last time I had heard something. Is it even younger? I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I, I think um, ultimately he needs to get help. And even if he does, it, he will never reach that same status unless by some weird way, everyone's just accepting of it. Like, Oh, you know what? You truly have shown that you've, you know, you've repented, you rehabilitated, you've made yourself a better person to society. We're willing to accept normally. That's not the case with situations like that. Once again, we're in, you know, maybe in the seventies, eighties and hell, even the nineties, people might've just been like, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, uh, not so much nowadays, man. Like think of how many people's grandparents have like a crazy age difference. 
Yeah. <laughs> my grandma was my grandma was fourteen. My granddad was twenty two. He just come back from the war. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. But back then, people people didn't really bat an eye. Like how often, uh, way back in the day, it was common for you know like a fourteen year old girl to be married to like a twenty three year old dude. That's fucking wild to me. It's yeah, very right? wild to me. My yeah. parents are like nine years apart. When, were they like in their twenties yeah. when they met? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I'm. No, my mom was ten, and my dad was. 20. <laughs> I was well, watching yeah. the Dark Side of the Ring with um, Dino Bravo. Or I started it. I don't. I didn't get through it, so I don't know if it's his ex-wife or a widow. But she was like, "Yeah, I was like barely eighteen or nineteen when I met Dino Bravo, and this is like nineteen eighty-five. I'm like, two and a half. I'm like, oh, what the fuck? He was like almost thirty. Yeah. Right. Well, it's, ah. Yeah, it is. It is kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy to think that. I mean, like same. Uh, I mean, there's an age difference between my wife and me. Not not tremendously big, but you know enough for us to joke about. Like, hey, remember when you were a senior in high school? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You you were just in advanced reading courses, right? So, but you know, we didn't meet until in, in our twenties too. You know, that that was the same thing. It was just kind of like. Uh, okay you know we're both in our 20s and it didn't seem as big of a a a deal then and i think like that that's also that thing that's kind of talked about now like after you hit the age of 30 even it's like ah you know maybe you're 31 32 and your your spouse or your significant other is 40 42 45 quick i don't know i don't know i I mean getting older i have friends that are like crazy age ranges from like can be considered senior citizens you know (laughs) and we just don't think about that but like you know if i was like hey i have a friend who's a senior citizen and i'm 16 years old like everyone be like whoa what's going on dude we got to look into that we got to investigate dino bravo was born in 1948 by the way and his wife i think she said they met in like 19 1985 somewhere in there so he was born in 1948. His wife said she was like barely 18 or 19. And so he was almost 40. He was then almost when 40, they got married. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I thought he was younger when he was in WWF. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. That's fucking, that is very, very weird, man. Very weird. Yeah. I'm sure people love this episode. It's definitely hard left compared to what we <laughs> talked about last week. Not, not quite as fun. As last week's episode towards the end here, because we're talking about obviously some <laughs> very real shit on this episode. <laughs> yeah. Anything uh, positive we it's can tough end, end side the of the ring, with? man. Tough side of the ring. There we go. That's the name. <laughs> that's that's the tweet, baby. Um, anything positive, Kaz? Well, if you don't like Don Callis, he's no longer an executive for Impact, so I guess that's positive. If you're not a Don Callis fan. Oh really? I didn't even hear that. Wow. Gosh. Yeah. All this news coming out. Yeah, he is no longer an executive in any capacity with Anthem or Impact. Wow. So he's just basically Kenny Omega's on-screen manager. Wow. Ooh. Huh. Weird. Well, I guess it makes sense that he couldn't really do anything in an executive capacity if he's really spending a lot of time with uh, mm-hmm. you know, Kenny and doing all that stuff with the Bucks. Yeah. Well, I knew his contract was coming up, but I just, something told me that he would probably just resign with it, but I I shouldn't be that surprised because I think he even said, he kind of like gave hints in interviews and stuff that uh, I think he was kind of looking out to see what else was out there. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense that he would probably branch out, but, uh, Oh shit. The Collision of Korea Dark Side of the Rings tonight. Oh, yeah, that one's going to be good. <laughs> Fucking Anoki, baby. Yep. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I forgot to try to uh, get Fro on the show. I know he's not like a big Anoki guy, but Anoki and Fro, just talking about those, like that guy with Fro would probably be a fantastic episode. We we have to do an episode on Anokiism and all the crazy shit Anoki did. Yes, yes. Yeah, man. He he is definitely he's a character. He he is the stuff that has, he's done 
it's just kind of insane. And, and like, even for all the love of wrestling, what, you, you wouldn't think that he would be a political guy, but he is <laughs> and a peaceful guy and some crazy Middle Muslim East too? situations. Yeah, Jew? that's no Muslim because of that, because of a situation with the Middle East. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely a crazy thing. Uh, his, his, his story, his life story is is really interesting, very interesting. And that's, yeah, that's partially why, like, the collision in Korea, like, he wanted to basically bring peace again. So he wanted to bring peace through wrestling. But, yeah, yeah, cool stuff. Peace through wrestling, peace through fucking laying on your back and kicking black dudes <laughs> yeah. in the legs. Yep, yeah. Peace yeah. through dropping people Shortening in their fucking a boxer's head. career. Shortening a boxer's career, <laughs> shortening people's lifespans by fucking compressing their spinal columns. That's what we're all about. Meeting a young uh, MMA fighter for the first time and just slapping him in the face right after a fight. <laughs> and the guy going, what? <laughs> Leon <story>, Machida's story. <laughs> the story about Machida, like Anoki slapping him. He was kind of like, what the fuck? What is up with this dude? Yeah, he was like, no that shit clue, was man. weird. He said, yeah. he said that shit was weird because uh, Machida, even though he's uh, half Brazilian, half Japanese, he, I think, spent more time in Brazil growing up. Mm -hmm. So he, I don't think, was too aware of Anoki's custom of getting slapped. So he's like, nope. I just took it and moved on because that shit was weird. Yep. Uh, yeah, that was then, absolutely hilarious. We could talk about the Ogawa Hashimoto shoot where... Ogawa just decides I'm gonna beat the shit out of you now, and poor Hashimoto is forced to fight a legitimate fighter. Yeah, that is how I feel like the brawl for all would play out. <laughs> like our version of the brawl for all, I feel like yeah. that's how it would play out. A lot of people realizing, oh shit, like I'm <laughs> way in over my head. Yep, and I feel bad for Hashimoto in that clip because he he's fighting a dude who's a, a legitimate fighter. A judo Olympian, I believe. I believe he's the guy that invented the STO. Yeah, yeah. Space yeah. Tornado Ogawa and um, the poor bastard. Like he really, I think he realizes like, oh shit, this is a shoot, and he knows that he can't just get out of the ring and walk away because he has a reputation as a tough guy. So he's like, well, I gotta fight this guy. And he tries his best, yeah, but it's right. clear it's just like a tough dude versus a professional. Yeah. It was like when um, I texted you guys after I finally finished the uh, Brawl for All Dark Side of the Ring earlier today, where Butterbean's like, yeah, I just got brought in to basically execute Bart Gunn. <laughs> yeah. it felt like. like Butterbean was real matter of fact. He was just like, honestly, if you would have fought me like the other guys, he would have had a shot. But he tried to box with me. He's like, yeah. of course I was going to knock him out. This is a terrible idea. So, yeah. Ah, oh, Noki. Just setting people up for failure. It's the MMA shit. <laughs> I say that clip yeah. that I put, uh, I don't know if you guys recognize that, but somehow Liger got sucked into fighting Minoru Suzuki in a shoot fight. Yeah, yeah. And yep, Minoru yep. beat the fuck beat the, out of him. Yeah, he couldn't dude. do anything. Like, no. Liger could not do shit. He couldn't yeah. do anything. It was. That's so crazy. I felt so bad. I felt so bad because it's like. I mean, props to him for getting in there and trying. He got in there and tried to fight. You know, mm -hmm. he's he's done more than I've ever done. I've never been in a professional fight, let alone against a guy who is a legitimate pioneer of mixed martial arts. But I can't sit here and not say that it wasn't embarrassing because it was pretty fucking yeah. embarrassing. <laughs> and I feel bad for him. I feel bad. Yeah. It's like, you're wearing your fucking Gliger mask and some fucking Speedos, and a yeah, dude, dude who tapped out Ken Shamrock is just chasing you around the ring like a fucking... Like, you are a rat, and he is a cobra, and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> you can't get out of the ring. You can't run away. You can't run away, because your reputation's ruined in no, wrestling, No, yeah, too. exactly. You, yeah. You got too far to the point where it's like, I have to fight this guy. Yeah. And... I'd be saying it, under my breath, just choke me out, dude, please. <laughs> like, come on. Oh, it, it, it's a classic thing. That's like, why do you think there's so many rear naked choke wins in MMA? Because you can't, you don't want to look like a total wuss and just like, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore. You see guys all the time, they won out. They just turn their, they turn and give their back. Yep. Turn yep. and give, give your back. back. That's yep. just like the honorable way of like, just get me the fuck out of here. Yep. That's yeah. why there's so many rear naked choke wins in MMA because people are just like, I'm done. Just finish me because yep. 
for whatever reason, corners don't fucking stop fights anymore, and referees don't stop fights, you know, when they should. Yeah. So that's why guys just kind of turtle up and turn their back because they're done, but no one's going to save them even though they're supposed to. The yeah. rules are were designed for people to step in and save you, but they they get betrayed sometimes. Yep. Yeah, so. Uh... I will say I was just at the House of Truth, and uh, once again, man, like a lot of good uh, – Good talent coming up, dude. There's, there's, there's a lot of, a lot of good prospects that uh, I'm happy to see are branching out outside of Michigan, uh, traveling. So, like this next generation of wrestlers, I think people are going to be pretty happy with, no matter where they see them at. What else? House of Truth plug. I have to put the link in the description for all that. Let's see what else. Follow us on the social media, TA Wrestling Fan, Podbean, Google Podcasts. We I put us on a bunch of different podcast apps yeah. now. So we're, we're branching out. Make sure you hit up uh, our T Public store, uh, T E E, well, one of our T Public stores, T E E dot P U B slash L I C slash D D T shirts. And then also Pod Bros is still active. So go there, give us your money. We deserve it. We need it. We want it. Kaz. Your song "Sycamore" on Bandcamp. Yes, that's right. Check that out. Go buy it. I don't <clears> think Drake's gonna check it out though. What'd you say? I don't think Drake's gonna check it out. It's too religious. <laughs> too... <laughs> you do you think that uh, Drake Wirtz thinks that Noki coming down on the cross is blasphemous? <laughs> oh yeah, man. Oh. <laughs> do you think that Drake and AJ Styles get along? You think he might be, be too much for AJ Styles? Like <laughs> Do you he thinks the that they're friends, but AJ is just being nice to him. That, that's how I feel about that. Do you guys know about uh, AJ Styles freaking out during the original Battle of Los Angeles? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Kaz, do you know this story? No. So Chris Bosch, who was a uh, longtime SoCal independent wrestler, he won the first Battle of Los Angeles. He was a fairly popular guy in um, PWG in the early days of PWG. He and Scott Loss were a popular tag team. Uh, He was a guy that a lot of people in Scott Loss as well felt like probably could have been bigger stars, but you know, they kind of got burnt out and wanted to do other things outside of wrestling. And apparently this is really funny now because Chris Bosch, from what I've understand, is kind of religious now. And he kind of regrets doing some of the stuff that he did when he was younger, like the (laughs) lion cock and calling people all kinds of stuff like uh, blackers. Uh, during matches he said blackers not the other one yeah. <laughs> but um yeah he started doing a parody of the austin 316 speech at king of the ring and aj didn't realize that it was a parody he just thought he was talking shit about jesus you sit there and you thump your bible <laughs> It was like it was kind of tense. I have to find. Oh bit. yeah, it is. But yeah, uh, yeah man, find it he, on YouTube. <laughs> he got fucking heated. He got super pissed. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, so it. I guess Drake and AJ maybe would get along. I don't know. We'll see. Well, we'll never see. They probably do. But uh, what else do we gotta talk about? Cast a song. D T shirts. House of Truth. That's it, really. There's no more plugs that I could think of um thanks for listening thanks for watching whatever platform you choose to consume this on shout outs to john for being able to join us after oh yeah thank you for accepting my run in my interruption on you guys talking hey not a problem uh thank you guys for dealing with my random internet issues normally i don't have internet issues like that to cut out twice in the middle of recording that's fucking weird yeah we held it together yeah you guys are professionals 
I think Dana White sending me a message though for uh, all the slander last week. <laughs> oh my god, it would be that he would, he would. He's that petty. My boy Rome actually uh-huh. texted me, John. He said, "Is uh, John and Dana White going to fight in the next Triller Fight Club?" <laughs> And I was like, I kind of hope it happens because John would beat his ass. I would gladly fight for charity. I'm not rich by any means, but if Dana White wanted to have a fight with a Midwestern guy who's out of shape and has lower back problems from all of his his, his martial arts days, yes, yes, absolutely. I would train for that fight to fight boxer sizing instructor Dana White for charity. <laughs> Pick your charity, Dana. Wow, uh, Republican Party is not your charity. <laughs> Let's fucking go. John said, pick a charity and pick a hand, bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. He, he could have picked a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, RVD wasn't kidding with that pick a hand shit. I watched that uh, icons. He was knocking people the fuck out, those tough mans, dude. Yeah, man. RVD would whip a motherfucker's ass. <laughs> Shout outs to Battle Creek's finest. Shout outs to uh, Trenton, Michigan's finest. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Detroit. It's just like the Steiner yeah, yeah, brothers Detroit. are from Detroit. They're from fucking two and a half hours away. <laughs> uh, Michigan stand up. Yeah, that's it, man. Tuck your chin. <laughs>